Hello everybody, this is Dan Bigman from LearnGPR.com and I'm coming at you today with another video about one-dimensional GPR data. Now, a lot of people that I know who are beginners or who were never really taught about the benefits of 1D data, um, you know, don't understand the power of it It's and, and don't even understand what it is, right? I mean, don't even know where to find it. 1D data in GPR is the wiggle that's on usually the side of your screen that comes down, kind of wiggles down, you know, depending on where you are in your profile, right? So you'll have a screen <clears throat> and here's your you know, GPR profile. And then over here, right, you'll have something that looks like that, okay? This is 1D data, okay? This right here is 1D data. And today I'm gonna to give you two benefits of one dimensional data for ground penetrating radar projects. Now the 1D data is something, right? The wiggle gram, okay? It's like the, the, this one trace, this is literally a trace, right? It's the collection of all of the responses that you get from one point on the surface. That's what this is. The collection of all the responses through time, right? So this is time. This is distance. So if you want to see what's going on here, then it was going to show you in the wiggle gram, in the 1D data, what's going on exactly here in your profile. Okay? So people who are experiencing ground penetrating radar often look at this. This, this really is your data, right? This line is your data at this point. Okay? It is your data. Um, and so what you do is you take these collectively and you might put it into a grayscale plot that's a two-dimensional, um, but that's what this is. This is, tells you exactly what's going on in one spot. So why is that useful, right? What's the benefit of this 1D data and why do the experts look at 1D data but a lot of beginners uh, uh, don't? And, and again, it's okay, they just know we're never exposed, but that's what we're going to rectify right here and right now, today. Uh, I'm going to tell you two ways that you can use this one-dimensional data to help you in your interpretations. So, the first uh, benefit that it does is it gives you amplitude. It gives you amplitude. So when you look at your one-dimensional data set over here, right, this scale now for it, right, so you have two scales also, this scale, is on the side is going to be depth okay or time depth of time and on top it's going to be amplitude and it gives you plus and minus okay from zero so this is the amplitude it's going to give you so the further away from this zero that your wiggle gram is expanding in either the negative or the positive direction, the greater the amplitude. Well, what does that mean then? Well, in this case, right, what we might be seeing with this is the ground surface. So this, this is maybe, you know, this is your reflection, it's your ground surface reflection, okay? Ground surface reflection. And that's why you have a huge amplitude. Why? Because the air above the ground the waves traveling through the air, it hits the ground surface, it's a dramatic difference, and a lot of that energy comes back and gets recorded at the surface you know, by your antenna. And so what you have here is a ground surface reflection. So the, more, the, the greater the difference right, between the two materials, the greater the amplitude of the reflection. Now what's nice about the 1D data, this wiggle gram, is it can show you in different places exactly what the amplitude is. With two-dimensional data, that is your profile, a lot of times it can be difficult to see subtle variations, and let's say you're using a grayscale, in the black and the white reflections, right, uh, um, in your profile. So it may all look the same, or pretty close to the same, because you've cut off your, your plot, right, at a, at a positive and a negative at some point, and so it's gonna just show what that, you know, is at that cutoff. 
And you can be difficult to see variations in amplitude, even at the ground surface. But why is this important? Well, let's hypothetically say that you're looking for a burial, okay, or a trench, or something else, some ground disturbance at the ground surface. It could be hard to see it in two-dimensional data, but if you look at it here and here and here in 1D, it's going to give you variations. You know, it may be more subtle in one area, suggesting there's less of a difference in the soil and the air above, probably more porous. Or in other areas, it could be more dramatic. It's all going to depend on uh, um, you know, the variation between the ground surface and the air above. But if you're looking for ground disturbance, it can be hard to tell in 2D, but if you look in 1D, it can be very easy to tell sometimes because you might just get a really subtle reflection. So that's number one, is amplitude is critical for, uh, uh, um, you know, for interpreting the ground penetrating radar data and interpreting you know, what's going on below the ground surface. So that's benefit number one. Benefit number two is the polarity. <clears throat> benefit number two is the polarity. So, like I said before, it gives you positive and negative. Why is this important? Depending on what material your wave is transitioning from and into is going to create a reflection of one or the other poles. It might be positive, it might be negative. But, and we did a video about this, uh, about rebar versus voids, um, and I gotta do another video about, about voids uh, specifically, but the, the point is, if your wave is going from one material to another material, and it's speeding up, it's gonna have one polarity, so it's gonna be a positive polarity, and if it's going from, uh, and, and it's slowing down, it's gonna be generally a negative polarity. Now that all depends on how your GPR, I know I'm gonna get in the comments, I'm gonna get butchered in the comments, it depends on how your GPR is set, doesn't matter. The point is, you're gonna get a different response. Those responses can sometimes be difficult to see in your data. So let's say that you have a target here and you're getting a, you know, a, a, a hyperbolic reflection event, right? And it looks something like this, okay? So it's two different right, colors. You've got black and blue instead of black and white. Um, you know, and it looks this way. It could be difficult sometimes to see, you know, another one that might look like this, right? So this would be the reverse polarity, okay? Right? Blue, black instead. But in the one-dimensional data, you're going to see that, right? So... Almost, almost with you, stick, stick with me, stick up. The lights went out, we're going anyway. Stick with me. In the one dimensional data, what you can see is, in this case, you're gonna get a, pos uh, oh, sorry, a positive and then a negative, okay? That represents that line right there. On the other hand, over here, all right, the reverse would be true. So instead, what you would get is a negative and then a positive, right? Because it's reversed. And so when it's difficult to tell in 2D what's going on, it's very easy to generally tell in 1D. Which polarity is your response? And that will tell you if your wave is speeding up or slowing down. And the one-dimensional data is very important for that. It can tell you what's going on below the surface, right? So let's say you're locating graves. Well, did the grave collapse in or is there an air pocket? You can tell the difference. How can you tell the difference? Using one-dimensional data. So I hope that this was enlightening to you. I hope that you learned something that you never knew before. Sorry about the spookiness of the lights. It's actually almost a, a, you know, a Hanukkah Christmas time, New Year's time. It's not you know, uh, Halloween, so I don't know why they went, went, went spooky on you in this one, but we're going with this video anyway. And I hope you found something valuable in this. If you did, please like the video if you liked it, the content and share it with somebody that you know who might benefit from it. Subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can get notified every time we put out a new video. And in 2017, we're gonna be creating a ton of new content and you're gonna to wanna to get notified for it because it's gonna be exclusive. Some of it is gonna be exclusive stuff to YouTube. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Have a wonderful new year. Thank you for all your support throughout 2016 and I will see you on the next video.